We're at Microsoft Windows 2008, and I'm going to show you how to get past the error that you see when you try to connect to a server through FileZilla or through Command Prompt, where it says, could not connect to server when it tries to do the list. Uh, you can also get some other errors as well. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and create an FTP site. So right-click on Sites, click Add FTP Site, and we'll call it a test. And we'll just go ahead and choose a default document here, default folder, and we're going to leave all unassigned in port 21. We're also going to let it be, uh, let the FTP start automatically. We're going to click no SSL, as yes, we do not have a certificate at this point. If we did, we would check it. Under authentication, we don't want anonymous getting in there. We just want basic, and we're going to allow all users to get in, although later on, if you want, you can lock that down. We'll go ahead and click read and write for our permissions. Click finish. Now we want to make sure that we have the proper permissions, so we'll right-click on it and choose Edit Permissions, go to Security, and we click on Administrator, and we see Full Access. That's what we're going to log in as. We click on the user, we see we don't have full access. So at that point, we can go ahead and edit the users to have full access if we'd like. And it says Access Denied because we have to take ownership of that. But you get the idea on how that works. You can go into the folder itself, and you can... Go ahead and change permissions from there, take ownership, that kind of thing. So there's our administrator, and uh, there's our users. All right, so back to IIS. We now have a site, but we have some things that are not quite configured properly. So we're going to go to the root of the site, and we're going to make some changes up here before we can get this to work. So we're going to click FTP Authentication. And we're going to make sure that our basic authentication is enabled. By default, it's disabled. So you can enable it or disable it in the right-hand corner. And now we're going to go back to FTP authorization. And this one we're actually going to remove. We don't want to have all users, because otherwise it conflicts with the rights of the FTP site. So we'll go ahead and remove that. Now we'll go back again to our root and we will choose FTP firewall support. From here, we want to go ahead and put in, uh, uh, by default, it's 0-0. .0. Replace that with 5,000 to 5,100. And then put in the IP address of your outside IP address connection. This doesn't necessarily mean the outside IP address of your firewall if you're using alias IP addresses. So if your firewall is .73, but your FTP site is statically set to 72, then make sure you put in 72, not 73. But if you're using just one IP address, it's being shared for all port forwarding, then you would put the outside IP of the firewall. All right, we'll go back to our other areas here, and such as the IP address and domain restrictions, we're going to go ahead and make sure it has allow 0.0.0.0. .0. If you don't see that, you can click and allow entry, and you can type that right there, click OK, and then you'll see that show up in the list. After that, you're all done with this particular area, except for make sure FTP SSL says allow and not require. Let's go down to our site and make a couple of changes. First, let's check the FTP authentication, and that is enabled on basic, just like at the root level. Then we'll go to FTP authorization, and here's where we're going to go ahead and add our allow rule, and we're going to add, allow all users read and write access. Go back to the root of our test, and we've got current sessions, which we don't have yet. Let's go to FTP firewall support, and you can see the changes we made at the top level up here are now carried down to the child level here. So this is the correct settings. And we'll go to the FTP address and domain restrictions, and again, this passed down from the parent level down to the child level. All right, so uh, we're going to make sure FTP SSL is set to allow, not require. And now we are done with our changes in IIS. Now we need to go into the Windows firewall, make sure your firewall is turned on. Then go ahead and click on the inbound rules under the advanced area and click new rule. We're going to choose a port rule, click next. TCP, all specified ports, or specified ports, we're going to put in 20, 21, comma. 5,000-5100. This allows passive FTP, direct FTP, and then the ports that it will use to make our connections. Next, allow the connection. Next, make sure it's for all three sites. 
and we'll put in our name inbound FTP and finish so now we see inbound FTP right there also double click on that click on the uh, various areas make sure they look the way you want them to click on advanced and change the block edge traversal to allow edge traversal and that helps you get through certain firewalls and then click OK. So one more change we need to make, and this is sort of a radical change that some people may or may not agree with, but it does make it work. So uh, once you make the uh, firewall change to allow inbound on port 21 and then also on 20 if you want to do passive FTP, then you need to make one more change, and that is you need to allow uh, all, all ports, which is going to be a range, of 1,024 to 65,000. Now, if you don't make that change, then this the whole thing won't work from the outside, but it'll work fine from the inside. So if you want to make it work from the outside, you've got to open up these ports. Now, you don't have to open up all these ports. You can do some testing. Uh, th you know, port 1,024 on up there are much less risky than uh, ports below 1,024, where all the communication happens uh, with Windows. So go ahead and open that up, and, and if you choose, you want to narrow that to less ports you can certainly do that and as long as it works you can continue making that go all right so before we could not get anywhere now let's see if it works and there it is directory listing successful there is our files on the right hand side on the server and our local files on the left hand side so now you know how to get through the errors that uh, are come along with creating an ftp site and trying to access it from the